Grazie al microfono silenziato, non ti sentiamo. No. It's not working. I think you don't have, um, I don't know, sound on your computer or something. <laughs> okay, she will rejoin us, I think. Right. So are you based in Italy, Giorgio? I, I don't know, really. Yes. Uh, well, maybe I can um, start talking about um, a little bit of history of the company and where we started from and why we decided to develop this product. Okay. Um, uh, Grazia knows all about it, so <laughs> um, we don't need to tell her. Uh, uh, right. So um, Smartbug is a startup company that um, it's really a spin-off of a a previous company that I own that operates in the uh, embedded system development. So this other company um, uh, that is called Noviacom has been working with hardware and software development for embedded systems for a number of years. A couple of years ago, uh, we started realizing that the smart home environment needed um, some changes in the way it was um, uh, developed and uh, um, we know that uh, smart home and domotics in general have been around for about 30 years uh, without uh, really um, developing any uh, killer application that uh, made it very widespread. Um, a few years ago, a few changes have happened. Uh, the first one, the most important one, has been wireless technology. So one of the main reasons why smart home hasn't really um, uh, uh, developed in terms of market share has been uh, the cost of implementation and installation of the systems that in the past uh, was very invasive and disruptive for uh, the home environment. You needed to, uh, to, to wire up all of these devices. So wireless technology has been a major game changer in this uh, market because people started to realize that they need they didn't need to change any uh, wiring the house to implement smart home grazie prova a parlare vediamo se ti sentiamo niente non no but you have the microphone on mute and now you can press on the microphone ah ecco c'è il, il mute nel, nel, in basso a sinistra c'è il simbolo del microfono. Yeah, can you hear me okay. now? All yeah. right. All right. <laughs> Great. Good. Technology. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please, Giorgio. So the second major uh, breakthrough has been uh, voice assistance. So once um, um, Amazon Alexa and Google Home came into the market scene, uh, people started to um, see uh, this technology as more friendly. They started to realize that they could do something with the smart home environment that wasn't too nerdy or techy uh, and was available to everyone. So every one of us has one of these voice assistants in the house. Uh, the problem with that is once you play around with it for a couple of days, you realize that other than asking to play a song or what's the weather in San Francisco, uh, there isn't very much thing things that yes. you can do with your home, just having that. I have it as uh, a furniture. <laughs> right, right, but it's fun. I mean, people, uh, yeah. you know, came closer to technology this way, and this opened up a, a huge market of devices. But we believe that devices is not the right uh, starting point. So a collection of devices is not a, a smart home. Uh, what uh, needed was a an environment uh, change in the technology. So. We started from a few um, concepts trying to cut down all of the um, um, mess that was around the smart home, trying to come to the essence of it. And we realized that uh, uh, we use our home and we're used to play around with the home with a very specific uh, number of habits. You come home, you you know just dump the keys into uh, a bowl and you switch on the light with your finger. So still we are used to interact with a home in different ways, using our hands, using our voice and using our smartphone. So the other problem that we try to solve was space. Um, smart devices can take up a lot of space uh, around the house and they are ugly to see. 
we wanted to have something very much integrated into the home um, wiring system that would hide inside your in-wall sockets. And so we came up with uh, this object, which is an in-wall switch. It's a touch sensitive switch. So you can touch it to switch on the light or whatever is attached to it. And it replaces your switch. With this simple clip technology, uh, you can make it compatible to all the European standards, as well as the US and Canadian uh, market. Uh, and this is just a, a very cheap piece of plastic that uh, we pay a couple of cents of dollars in. We, we produce in China. We have an agreement with two factories in China. Inside this object uh, is this um, uh, piece of uh, electronic, uh, which is very uh, compact and uh, has been reduced very much. So this is the uh, smallest footprint uh, in wall switch uh, currently being developed in, in the market. The other thing that we started to think about was what is required to create an enabling technology. And if you bear with me for a second, I, I tell you what I mean. When the personal computer came about in the market, people really didn't know what to do with it. It was a, a TV screen. It was perceived as a TV screen with a keyboard. People didn't, business people realized right away what they could do with it. But home users, they thought that uh, this was a worthless piece of technology only for accountants. What changed the game was the perception that this was an enabling technology. Software was going to make it do the things that you care about. So maybe we have the same laptop computer, same brand, same model, but you have some software that is more related to what you do with your PC. And I will have different software with the same hardware to do different things. Um, another example of an enabling technology is this thing. It's just a piece of hardware where the functionality is defined by a, a different interpretation of what software is. Uh, and this particular platform uses mobile apps. So maybe we have the same brand and model of iPhone and you have certain apps, I will have different apps. And um, what makes our phones different is our interests. But the, the, the hardware is an enabling platform. It provides sensors, actuators, and communication systems to enable functions. Then software developers will enable different types of functionality depending on the interests of users. So starting from this concept, we created a product that has to be spread around the house because a house is an environment, it's not a single object. That's why we don't believe in smart devices, but smart environments. In order to create a smart environment, you have to have a device that is distributed throughout a space by design. And this is why this product is called a smart bug, which means literally a bug that is smart. And the reason for that is that we were inspired by colonies of insects. They have all the same hardware, ants are all the same, but they are specialized in different functions depending on what the ant colony needs. So this system um, creates a communication network based, based upon uh, Wi-Fi mesh technology so that every device can talk to any other device. It's a collective uh, system. Then they elect a gateway device that talks to your Wi-Fi router to go into the cloud. And this is done dynamically. And this solves the problem with Wi-Fi devices that might be placed around the house in, in some spots where Wi-Fi is not very good in terms of signal. This is completely solved because the devices talk to each other. They elect a gateway device that is one of them, like your um, queen bee in a, in a uh, bee colony. And if the queen bee dies, another one is made because the colony has to carry on. And this happens with this technology. If one of the devices has a problem, uh, the mesh network dynamically, dy dynamically reorganize itself so that another gateway is selected and all the other devices can continue and carry on with the work. Then we endowed the system with a number of sensors that could enable what you might 
be willing to do with your smart home environment. So the system has uh, temperature and humidity sensors to sense the environment. It has a power meter that uh, can um, check up your uh, energy consumption in a very detailed way. It has a digital microphone, so you can talk to it and send voice commands, uh, both using Amazon and Google Clouds, if you want, or our own cloud, which is right now very limited in terms of voice interaction. We're still working on it, but if you have a, an Amazon account or a Google account, you can leverage the cloud of Amazon and Google, and you don't even need to have the physical Alexa device because the system can listen to you directly and you would have it in every room of your home. Uh, then we um, started to think about what type of appliances you have in your home. You have three types of appliances, very old technology that is on, off, like your light or your heater in the bathroom maybe, or your um, uh, gate uh, that you open through your um, interphone. Um, so this is the very old technology. Then there is a mid old technology that is anything that has a remote control. And we still have lots of these things in the house. So we uh, placed a uh, IR blaster onto the device that is very powerful. So it can control anything that is in the same room as the device as a remote emulating system. Uh, and the third type of technology is smart technology that either talks Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. These are the two worldwide standards that are generally adopted anywhere in the planet. So we basically placed all of this technology inside the system. And um, what happens is that uh, you can talk to any device that you already have in your home or any other additional device that you might buy a brand new that has smart capabilities. The Bluetooth um, low energy interface is very interesting for a number of applications because it, it extends the reach of any device to anything else that is around it from a smart speaker that will let the system talk you back uh, to smart bands. And we are doing some um, experimental setups with some companies that deal with um, uh, home care of elderly. We developed a smartwatch uh, of our design that uh, measures some of the parameters, locates the person inside the house as an indoor localization system and can send alerts if the person falls down or has some health problem. Uh, all seamlessly, they don't have to do anything actively because the system uh, actively controls them without them doing anything. They don't have to press anything. They don't have to be anywhere specifically inside the environment because the, the very idea of smart environment is that the entire home is connected anywhere you are. So, and then the last bit that we believe is a strong innovation step, that is um, we made the system programmable in a similar way um, to what you would do with your smartphone. In a smartphone, what you add in terms of functionalities is apps. Any new app adds a functionality to your smartphone. We call this little bits of software smart plugins, but the concept is the same. So say you want to create a um, timer for your staircase lights. You select from our marketplace the timer smart plugin. You install it physically inside the system. So it resides inside the system, similarly to what an app does in your phone. It stays inside the phone once it's installed, and it turns the system into a timer forever, or at least until you uninstall that plugin. You want to create a smart thermostat like Nest or Google. You install a smart plugin that is a smart thermostat, and you don't have to install it in a specific place. You can measure the temperature in your living room, then the system talks to the other device that is your, in your laundry where, uh, room where maybe you have your heating system and tells it to switch on or off depending on the temperature. And once you have installed this smart thermostat plugin, um, that particular device that hosts this plugin will behave as a smart thermostat. 
The same as a remote control for your uh, AC. So you can switch on and off your AC from anywhere in the world, check your temperature. And all of this functionalities is present in each and every device so that you don't have to plan ahead what you want to do with every device. You can change your mind anytime. And if you want additional spaces to be covered, you just buy another box, place it into the home anywhere, and you extend the reach of the system in a completely seamless way. Um, so this is a, in brief um, <laughs> uh, the system. And um, hopefully, I, I, I was um, um, successful in conveying uh, what the system does and what the main innovations are. Um, uh, but of course, uh, you're free to ask anything. Um, I'm, I'm here. Thank you so much for uh, for the presentation. Well, you know, the, the tech guy in our team is Arjit, so uh, I will let him start and I have some questions as well, but after okay. the, the techie in the team. <laughs> the two techies talk with each other, right? It's called techie yeah. talk. Okay, yeah. uh, beautiful presentation. So I have one of my portfolio company based out of US in the same similar vertical. They have okay. a technology uh, regarding almost similar thing that you do. Only factories okay. have invented their own uh, hub and their own uh, network security system, which okay. is the claim that that cannot be cracked and that cannot be hacked. So everybody claims that. Anyway, because that's uh, yeah. one of my portfolios, so I thought that I should share what's happening. And yes, you are right. This is the future. And lots many of such companies would love to probably hop into that. I was just checking your website and just curious about few things which I have seen. Number one question okay. from my part would be when you say that you have a supply control in your home with the touch of your finger, that means you really don't need your smartphone to remember and connect every time. You just install an API or a plugin, probably a plugin which will remember all those gestures and your maybe your 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 i don't know do you collect your signatures or signature i mean to say not the handwritten signature but facial recognition body language the way they usually uh, move so is it learning on its own record it understand it remember it utilizing our machine learning and then self evolve and then you just don't need to utilize your smartphone again and again. Is it something that you're talking about or am I taking it? Right, uh, this is something that we are uh, uh, doing. I teach AI at the university and I direct a uh, neuroinformatics and cognitive science lab at the university here. So we are very much into AI and um, uh, you know deep learning, machine learning and all kinds of stuff related to uh, that. Um, we have made a choice uh, to let the user decide what happens of their data. So what we, our infrastructure creates a separate database for every account. And this database is completely encrypted with a um, uh, two uh, level of encryption based upon a randomly generated password that nobody knows. We don't store it, the user doesn't know it. Then they have multiple accounts with single password in a double encryption system so that uh, every database holds the data of a single user. If the user says, I'd like my home to learn from my habits and maybe you to suggest improvements in my energy, uh, since you, me you can measure the energy consumption, I would like to have a energy audit from you and your AI system. People can add an extra account to their uh, own account because every account can have many users. So they can add a user for us so that we can check the data. Uh, so that the system is based on a very strict privacy policy that uh, lets the user decide whether or not we can lurk into the data or not. This is for consumers market. Of course, we have a different, completely different business model for business clients. We have provided um, some systems to utility uh, companies that need to inspect tunnels. And because we have this mesh network capabilities, uh, we can uh, check position and health of uh, single uh, 
uh, workers in underground tunnels very easily. And this has been done because they couldn't find any solution that would work similarly to our system. And uh, we use smart bands in connection with the smart bulb technology to, to uh, implement this functionality. And in that particular case, they want to have their own database where all the data are stored and they do something with it that we are not involved with. This is for their internal policy, their data is of their property and they do whatever they want with it. So we just provide a channel to send the data to their cloud and then they store it independently. And this is something that we also do in the health industry where they want to have the property of the data and also they want to handle the data uh, themselves. But for users, uh, we, we do this we do some inference analysis of the data, but only if the users allow us to do it. Um, we try to balance the necessity of AI intelligent systems that run on the cloud with the perception of uh, um, invasion of privacy that some people have. So uh, anybody can have it their way, uh, to uh, quote Burger King <laughs> uh, advertisement campaign. Sorry for that. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, so if you are so sure about this, I just want to understand when you outsource your some part of your work to China, what does the reason cost or you don't find any any manufacturing unit there in Italy? Uh, just well, initially there, there, there is a number of uh, companies that can manufacture our product. The problem is that scaling up is not possible here in Italy. So what happens is that uh, going up, uh, we plan to, for the consumer market, to have uh, in the ballpark of 50 to 100,000 units per month. In that ballpark, they go to China. So what I did a couple of years ago, I went to China a few times. I, we selected many, many companies. And then we, you know, uh, funneled down this to two companies that were, uh, well, they gave us a good um, uh, deal and they were also uh, quality wise uh, up to the par. And we have an agreement with them and they can go up to a million pieces uh, per year, each of them. They know that uh, of each other, so they, they are fine with it. Um, and we explained to them that uh, we couldn't rely on a single partner for um, uh, uh, robustness of the supply chain and they are okay with it. Uh, we don't tell each, any one of them what the deal is with the other, of course, but uh, um, uh, so we found it very productive. They are very efficient. They are very reliable and um, uh, on a commercial basis, they have been very uh, respectful so far. Uh, we had a few problems during the prototyping phase and they have covered all the costs of their mistakes without asking any questions. So uh, my experience with them has been uh, excellent so far. Of course, we are suffering a bit for, from the chip shortage uh, worldwide problem. So some of the components uh, come in quite late uh, these days. Um, but other than that, they have been excellent partners so far. So uh, cost is one of the reasons, but it's not the main reason why we went abroad. If we have to deal with someone, it has to go to China. So we have a middleman in Italy. We're not interested in that. Uh, if they could cover all the way to a million pieces per year, we might have decided to go with an Italian or European company. But uh, uh, from what we have gathered so far, uh, for large quantities, they would go to China anyway. So we decided that we, uh, we might, might uh, ha as well handle the, the uh, relationship directly. Right. Um, uh, I understand this this point. Like, uh, but your hidden technology is not outsourced to anyone. The the technology is designed, uh, developed, software, firmware. Everyone is in our environment locally. So uh, all they get is a. Um, uh, Gerber file to produce the electronics and an encrypted firmware that uh, uh, it, it's updated through over the air uh, upgrade systems from our cloud directly. So um, uh, they don't get their hands in any of the sort of rich part of the technology. 
which is patented anyway, but uh, as you know, in China, they don't really care if you have a patent <laughs> that much. Yeah, yeah, because I have experience working with Chinese guys for quite a long number of years, both in finance and both in technology and in manufacturing. So hence, I was just curious about these questions. I can ask differently a couple of business related question, but I will leave it to Bianca. Because okay, uh, okay. So then, then I will unmute myself and then we'll talk. Yeah, but beautiful, <laughs> but beautiful product that you, that you have created. To be very yes, honest, I love, to, love to understand more about the pricing point of view. But mm. after Bianca, yeah. Uh, thank okay. you. Not not a problem. I my questions are more technical regarding the business side of the business because the product okay. I'm I'm in love with it. I'm very happy to see that I have uh, Alexa back home and <laughs> staying on the like a furniture object and I don't use it. <laughs> So yeah, it's very, very beautiful product. I just want to know when you started the company, you said it's a startup? Yeah, we started at the end of two, uh, 2019. Uh, it was November of 2019. And of course, all, mm -hmm. um, the COVID crisis started right, right after that, but yeah. we kept working. Uh, so what is the, the turnover at the moment of the business? So uh, uh, last year we finished the development, and uh, this year we, uh, we we closed last year with about uh, eighty thousand uh, euro, and we plan to reach uh, three four hundred thousand this year with contracts for the B two B market uh, that we have collected mm -hmm. so far. Um, okay. And uh, that's good. How many decision makers are in the in the company? So we have uh, one CEO, uh, mm -hmm. which is a woman. Um, and oh. um, yeah, <laughs> and then we <laughs> have a team then. <laughs> yeah, okay. certainly. It, it's so a, one CEO. It, yeah, one CEO, and then we have. Um, I am the CTO of the company, so I'm in charge of uh, um, supervising all the technical development and the software and firmware development. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a CMO for the marketing and commercial side of the company that is Paolo who couldn't join us today. Uh, maybe you will be back in time uh, to say hi, but uh, you had to run for a, a meeting. Um, and then we have a board of director, uh, and uh, this involves uh, one of the business angels, uh, the mm -hmm. CEO and myself. Mm -hmm. And okay. we have four business angels. One is Grazia, and then we have another three uh, people who have financed a part of the development of the company. And uh, so decision making is a process that is uh, quite fluid these days, but uh, we have um, uh, basically the day to day operation is in charge It's left to the three key figures, um, technical, administrative and marketing people. And then we have a bi weekly meeting with the um, board of directors where we share uh, you know, the progress and maybe we um, collect uh, suggestions for uh, important decisions come along along the way. I see. So you already have some funding from business angels. You you said about some people in the team as business angels. Right. We have uh, received two hundred thousand from the business angels and uh, mm -hmm. another three hundred thousand from a bank uh, loan. Uh, and this has fueled two years of development, uh, two thousand and twenty and twenty one, where we worked. Uh, through different prototypes, uh, all the firmware environment, the cloud system, and the software environment. And now you want to go for an investor <laughs> as well? Well, the thing is that uh, uh, I'll tell you what our needs are, because uh, we have two different uh, market um, strategies. One is business to business, and this is a, um, a service model. So what we do, we sell the devices, um, and we uh, provide a vertical application on our cloud for the client that pays a yearly uh, subscription to the, to the service. And um, this has a very large mar margin, profit margin, and uh, we can um, work on a few large clients that have specific needs, especially in the industrial health sectors, which is what we're working right now. And we can handle this uh, basically uh, with our own um, uh, funding. Uh, then there is something much larger in terms of scaling up, which is the consumer's market, mm -hmm. where we sell the product and also we sell some of the smart plugins, 
the more sophisticated ones. Similarly to what happens on the Google market, on the Play Store or the Apple Store, uh, either one shot or on a subscription level basis. Mm -hmm. um, in order to do this, we have uh, um, uh, worked out a plan in terms of uh, um, uh, marketing strategy that has to be at least international, North America, Europe, and some of the Middle East would be the target points to this uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and we have also um, received um, a contact call from Amazon that has uh, done a due diligence on the product and has allowed us into the Launchpad program, which is a specific program that uh, Amazon has for startup companies. They have a high scale up potential. So Amazon uh, has uh, worked with us uh, quite closely uh, in, in the last year. And uh, what they tell us is that um, basically we need to have a um, um, stock availability in order to start this business with the consumer's market that is quite large if we want to tackle different markets at the same time. Their logistics only works if you have the product in their hub because people click and they want to have it at home uh, right away. So this is quite a large investment in terms of um, uh, production capability, and mm -hmm. um, we cannot afford that to do that on our own. That's yeah. why we're looking for extra capital. Okay. Uh, I understand. What is the profit margin so far? Well, on the B2B is quite large um, in, in, in terms. So, for example, uh, I'll give you one example. One of our clients has uh, purchased um, 5,000 euros of a product that pays 20,000 euros per year for the service. Mm -hmm. uh, these companies have um, very high standards, so they are willing to pay a quite large subscription uh, to have a service that they couldn't get any, anywhere else, which is what the situation has been for this particular um, you know, um, uh, companies that we ha are working with. For the, um, for the consumer's market, the profit is around 40% of the, mm -hmm. Uh, product cost, uh, and of course, this is uh, without considering uh, extra cost for um, uh, for um, some of the marketing effort that we have to handle. So basically, including everything from the cost of the product, production, shipment, handling, and everything that Amazon will handle, and they charge us uh, twelve percent for that. Uh, uh, stocking product and uh, handling all the final delivery and post sale after sale services, uh, which is for us, we are a very small company. It's uh, we couldn't afford to develop our own logistics, at, not, at least not at this stage of our development. Um, so the consumer's market is more of a scale up effort where we want to make generate large numbers um, and. Um, the additional revenue that comes from smart plug-in sales, we believe is going to be quite substantial. So the idea is what, once people have their product in their home, they will want to improve it. And we can leverage on the world developers that are out there in the world. And for every dollar that they sell, we get a dollar ourselves without you know, sitting at home and enjoying uh, what we've done. This is the hope. Okay, uh, that's wonderful. For what amount of money do you want to apply as an investor funding? Well, we we have a, a uh, basically we have worked out a um, um, a range depending on how quickly and how many markets we want to tackle at once. Mm -hmm. So the minimum amount will be one point five million, and the maximum amount will be three and a half million, depending on how we want to tackle different markets. Say we want to start from the North American market, which is the most responsive one today. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe is a, 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 a bit slower, uh, aside from UK and Germany, they are more aggressive in terms of um, by purchasing smart mm -hmm. home technology. The rest of Europe is lagging a little bit behind. And, and then there is uh, all the um, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and all the um, uh, Far East side. Uh, including uh, China with, you know, 
uh, some caution because we know that Chinese market, uh, our partners have told us many times, you have to have a commercial partner inside China uh, if you want to tackle the Chinese market that is very interested in this kind of product. Mm -hmm. But we haven't worked out um, an agreement with anybody over there so far. Okay. And what is the vision on the long term? What what do you dream to do with your company? Do you want to sell it to a bigger guy? In the uh, well, uh, you never say never uh, <laughs> because you never know. But uh, the, the, the long term vision is that um, if the technology gets a very large adoption base, mm -hmm. it might become of interest of appliance producers. So one of the, the third step of our strategy is OEM development. Say you create a washing machine. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, people will endow this washing machine with Wi-Fi. And then this is the standard technology. But if you have something a, bit, a little bit more sophisticated, that is have a rather large adoption base, you might want to endow your washing machine with the smart bag technology so that you can install plugins that are specifically designed for your washing machine. Uh, you can talk to other devices of your brand or other brands around the house. So this is the long-term vision, but of course this will happen only if we flood the market with our devices, uh, yeah. which we have to do. That's true. So North America is the first market to responsive to your product, Europe, and you said UK and Germany, and then Australia, New Zealand, Japan. That's very interesting to see how people react to technology. Arjit, I am, I'm done with the questions. <laughs> Uh, just uh, curious about your marketing strategy. If you are looking for USA, I guess uh, yeah. there are companies who will be your competitor for sure. Um, and if we look at Australia as a market, limited number of footfalls are there. If we look at Japan as a market, of course, there is a high potential, but I really need to check and hop in whether there is other player in the market or not. South Korea might be our interest. And if you talk about um collaborating with biggies of course amazon have got their own acceleration model so i'm not sure whether you have applied over there and you have been um selected if not then of course we can talk if yes then also we can talk no problem right we um, have been selected for the launchpad program which is not an acceleration program but it's a i know i know, I know. Uh, you know it okay let me let me, let me give you a perspective so uh, I have probably worked with almost uh, all those platforms that you can think of, which includes Google, Amazon, Samsung, Moga, Intel, Alibaba, blah, blah, blah. It's a long list. Uh, okay. Your stars, your, your tech stars, or I mean, the number of accelerators that is there. So I mean, they're bored either as a mentor or as an advisor or as an external helping hand to raise fund. So definitely this is one of the biggest uh, potential business that you have started. There is no doubt in it. Um, regarding fundraising, you want to do it in one shot or go, or you have a strategy in your mind that you will be doing it in uh, multiple rounds? Well, our, our hope would be to do it in multiple rounds. We don't want to give away too much at this stage of the company. We know very that we nice, have a- Very nice. Probably this is, Second time I'm talking to a startup and in this investor roundtable who is focused enough and do understand the valuation game. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that uh, when you raise funds in this way, um, of course, there will be someone who will probably try to buy you off. Okay, that will be the ball game. You, you guys are okay, completely fine with that because I'm sure after you pitch, there will be interest level which will be increasing. <laughs> People will people will probably uh, do their own kind of um, activities. So me and Bianca will be there for all those kind of negotiation deals, which you allow us to do that. So of course we'll be there uh, in both sides of the table. So we'll be more than happy to do that. It's not a problem at all. So yeah, like from my end, like uh, it's hundred percent like agree that you are one of the potential startup whom we can probably have an article and maybe we can grow these things together. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, so, uh, of course, uh, uh, as you were saying, uh, we're trying to build value uh, for the company. And we would like to go step by step if this is uh, possible, considering the general conditions. 
so that when we sell, because of course, at some point you have to sell, uh, we sell the right value for ourselves yeah. and for all the investors that believe in us. Uh, but selling at the right point, um, from my limited perspective, not, I'm a not, tech not, guy. Maybe, maybe, maybe after nine, 10 years, not now. Yeah. Work a little yeah. bit, you want to sell, don't sell now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not now. And in fact, yeah, I'm exactly. I'll, I'll share you an interesting point. Today morning, I was talking to um, our Korean counterpart. I'm not sure if you have Googled uh, me uh, well. So I, I have a, a very strong base in South Korea, including a couple of other parts of the world okay. as well. In South Korea, there is a company who is doing a lot of good works in European countries. And recently they backed a deal from Greece for about 40,000 apartments that, that is coming up new for their security systems. This is a okay. new digital security lock that these guys have created. Uh, the reason I'm sharing with you, probably both of you guys will go hand in hand utilizing a couple of deals. So let's see, I will talk to Bianca. Yep. We will find out a strategy for you guys, not only about only fundraising. We will see that what best can be possible from both of us, like both the crazy ecosystem builders <laughs> that <laughs> entrepreneurs can grow. Yeah? Yeah. Right, right. What um, is important can... is that the event is offline. I talked with Gratia about that. It will be in Dubai on the 9th and 10th of March. So it's very close. Okay. I hope you can accommodate your agenda for that. <laughs> uh, well, we have already uh, tried to look at uh, flights and uh, from Catania, there is a direct flight to Dubai, but we would have to come. Uh, so we have to stay, stay there at least five or six days because uh, the flight is not every day. Um, yeah. But this is uh, not going to be a problem. One on a more operative side, do we proceed directly loading up our pitch in the link you provided or can we send it to you beforehand so you can share some thoughts and yeah. maybe suggestions with us before we submit it? Share us, share us in the email instead of the link. You don't need to apply with through the link. I mean, we are already talking. So okay. send us else utilizing the email. You can... You can mail to Bianca. I can give you my mail ID as well. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gracia, do we need to stay there three nights? I believe yes. Don't come only to attend this investor roundtable. Not every day you are traveling in Dubai. Stay for a couple of more days. Probably Dubai is the best hub to probably, you know, explore opportunities, opportunities for more business. So maybe. Yeah. You know, and we will arrange some meetings with the investors and some other people who are tra traveling to Dubai. I'm, I'm talking with a lot of people, so you will meet and network with a lot of business people. So it's, you know, it's a pity not to stay at least three nights if you come to Dubai, okay? Yeah, yeah, we stay will. For longer, stay for a little longer, like four or five days, approximately <laughs> four nights probably. Uh, me okay. and Bianca, we are actually trying our best to make the entire trip uh, worthwhile for all of you, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Grazia, we cannot hear you. I don't know why. What you are doing with your microphone? Ma che cosa? <laughs> <laughs> My Italian. I have just a few words, but I, I enjoy talking in Italian. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I I've been to uh, Romania uh, quite a few times many oh. years ago. Okay. Uh, and and uh, I was always fascinated because we have a common root. Our languages have a common root. Yeah. And it's it's quite. Uh, funny to hear some of the words that uh, uh, sound like a different version of your own word uh, yeah. for that particular thing. And uh, I guess it's the same feeling that you get when you hear Italian. Actually, and the I other thing... understand it. I understand everything, but I speak Spanish. I've been studying in school Spanish and I cannot talk in Italian, like all my head is in Spanish. So. <laughs> right. And the other thing that struck me was how uh, Italian opera how much Italian opera is popular in Romania, especially among the young people, is something that here uh, people below 70 uh, <laughs> never goes to, 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 to attend. But uh, there is very popular and it, it was something uh, yeah. very surprising to me and very, very nice because I like opera. So <laughs> we are in love with all the artists in, in Italy. You have such a great history. Yes, Grazia, we can hear you. Oh, yes. that's it. With my with my uh, mobile. So I'm happy that you liked, I'm happy that uh, uh, Giorgio introduced uh, Smartbag. 
we have been work he have been worked on this uh, very interesting app until now so i'm very happy that you liked it this is a very interesting amazing app so i it hope is. we could do a lot of business together from this and and others business Yes. Okay. Let me send the follow-up email with all the details you need, with the NDA we have to sign and everything about, we have some hotel recommendation if you need, if not, yeah. it's your, you know, your choice. Um, okay. I will send you an email to you and Giorgio with all the details, okay? Yeah, thank you very much, Bianca, you're thank great. You. Thank you, Arjit. It's been really a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you and hopefully uh, we will uh, have a great time in Dubai soon. So. And would love to explore lots many more things because I have a couple of things going on in my head regarding your product. <laughs> okay. Not That's on great. Product, That's not on great. the product development, not on the product development part, but mainly on the business part, which can mm -hmm. probably lead to a new addition of your product. When you talk about plugin, I'll share once we meet. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, all right. Great. Thank you so okay. much. Thank, Thank you. you, Bianca. Thank you, Aji. Thank you. Grazie, guys. Giorgio. Ci sentiamo. Speak later. Okay. Speak bye, later. Bye. Right. bye. 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 Ciao, ciao. 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 ciao.